in this whole story. She carries the promise. She was divinely chosen by God for Isaac. So now we have about a 900 mile round trip. Two months, they said, approximately, to leave Hebron to get to Mesotomia and to go back. Think about, when you, put this in, when you put this in perspective, this was a tremendous task. And how many know Eliezer probably wasn't 25 years old? I don't think he was. I don't think he was. I'm saying. Yeah, I'm sure he was. Like, that's what he was like, young man. No, he wasn't no young man. He was Abraham's most trusted master. Abraham was 140. Abraham had to get to know this man. They probably got for years. So Eliezer may have been 100 years old himself. He could have been old as Yeah. So Eliezer was up there in age himself. He was no young man. But how many know he was, he was obedient to the Spirit of God? <laughs> Isaac saw the camel approaching. Can you imagine what Isaac Hart was feeling like when he saw that, that caravan coming down after two months later? Okay. And the Bible said he's out there, he's out there in the yard meditating, right? Mm -hmm. Grieving over his mother. Grieving over his mother, meditating on his soon to come bride. Hey, I got it. his soon to come bride. Mm -hmm. And he was about to meet Rebecca. I mean, you know, he probably was anxiously awaiting that. He's about to meet his wife. Meeting Isaac. Someone read verses 64 and 65. Rebecca looked up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she was like on uh, the camera. And she said, as she had said unto the servant, what man is this that walks in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Mm. So Rebecca too was she took a veil and covered her face. But Rebecca too was awaiting this meeting. She was anxious. They had not known each other. They didn't know anything about each other. We're gonna get this. She and Isaac. She saw Isaac and she dismounted from her camel. She was anxious. I mean, she got off. She saw him at a distance. He probably was a nice looking guy. She probably, oh, God fulfilled my promises. <laughs> he knows exactly what I like. But she probably bailed herself in preparation for this meeting. So why would she bail herself, D? Why would she cover her face? I imagine it was a custom. It was a custom. Yeah, it was not supposed to have been seen. You know, right. Before they this shows her standard of purity. She was a virgin. They said she was a, a virgin, a, 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 a kept damsel. Mm -hmm. So it was their custom. So she immediately veiled herself because here again, she understands. She could have walked up there and said, hey, how's it? And she was anxious, but then she knew she had to go back and be the servant that God had. Faith was about to be expressed. Not like this. There was no miracle, no prophetic oracle, just faith in God. Amen. And nowadays in many churches, we're always looking for the next experience. A lot of churches are built on, especially this charismatic movement, there got to be another movement of the Holy Ghost. Right. it got to be fire come down. But I'm saying if you have the Holy Spirit living in you, every day is a blessing. Amen. I don't mind a move of God. But every day, but God gave us his, we have his full word now. Mm -hmm. We have the promises of God. So I don't need a, 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 a charismatic movement every Sunday mm -hmm. to stay faithful to God. Amen. I just need to Amen. just come. Yes. <laughs> Worship him in spirit and truth. That, is so that right there is the miracle. That's, that's I so think true. about Jacob there whenever he, he thought that he was getting Rachel and he got Leah. <laughs> And then later, the all night long, he said he got one. But see, it was an act of faith. He believed that he was getting who he, who he wanted. It goes right back to this. Well, uh, Isaac is, uh, is an act of faith. He didn't have to see her faith. He was waiting for her. He didn't care too much about what she looked like. 
and let's face it, whatever God does is good. Whatever God does <laughs> is real good. <laughs> That's it. Whatever God does is perfect. Yeah. We don't we don't see it with the naked eye all the time. Uh -uh. But once once it's, once the whole plan has been revealed, we say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. <laughs> Especially when you know you are where God wants you to be. Right. Lord, I thank you. When you know God is when you are exactly where God wants you to be, that's the miracle. Because he said, we got to stay on that straight and narrow. That's the miracle. And many people stray off. Stray off. All the time we have strayed off. But one day you say, I'm going to trust this thing. I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm going to give him my life. I'm going to put my life in his hand and give him complete control over my life. The good and the bad. Because we know all things are working for my good. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> but the veil, man, I mean, let's be real, the veil was for purity. The white and the veil meant purity. Yes. Yeah. We got some people, they should come down black. <laughs> Me too, I'll leave that alone, though. <laughs> don't, wear no white, don't wear no white, brother. You on, you on, you on, you ain't nothing pure there anymore. But now I know I'm a new creature, right? Old things have. That's the way. Behold, all things have become new. I have a new life. Amen. Amen. That's right. Beginning the relationship, the last verses, 66 and 67, so on. Verses 66 and 67. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebecca, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Mm -hmm. Now that's important right there. And she said, yeah. right there, right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> he loved her. And a lot of people would have thought he didn't know her and everything I could, but God was in the plan all the time. He knew the love he was going to have for Rebecca, yeah, yeah. and it, it's it, it's it's really a beautiful story. You know what? To me, it's like a love story. Yeah, it it's is a beautiful. Love story, it's yeah. really it's beautiful. But whatever God does, it's going to be it, it's going to be beautiful. So whatever God does is yeah. wonderful. So yeah. it, it's really a beautiful story. Yeah, too. His mother says she's already dead and gone. Mm -hmm. Yes. So here, Eliezer gives Isaac an account of all the events. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm sure that was a glorious meeting. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. When he tells you, hey, this is how I found her, and we know this is what God sent, Isaac was like, amen. amen. Rebecca stood by quietly and listened. God had answered their prayers. He answered Isaac and Abraham's prayers. He answered Eleazar's prayers. He answered Rebecca and her family's prayer. God answered everybody's prayer. And you can see how we all are connected. That's why it's so important when God is telling you to be obedient, you need to do it. Because you are affecting so many. It's like a web. One gets out, it messes up the whole plan. Amen? That's why when God tells you something, it's not just, it's not just for you. He was answering Eleazar. It was for him. It was for Isaac. It was for Rebecca. They all got their personal prayer request answered. But it was for millions. 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 And when you are disobedient, it affects millions. So when, he, when Abraham went out there and got with Hagar, mm -hmm. and they had that, what was their son's name? The other son? Hagar's son, the one. He's the father of the Edomites, Ishmael. And to this day, they're still fighting because of that disobedience. So your disobedience is affecting your family, everybody around you, as well as your obedience is positively affecting them. That's why we need to be aware of a lot of characters in the Bible know their background Amen. It gives yeah. us insight of faith in, in, in the thing that God wants us to know. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Isaac took Rebecca and they said in four steps. Four steps. He entered Sarah's tent, which now had become his tent. Mm -hmm. She became his wife. Mm -hmm. He loved her. And now he was comforted in his lingering sorrow. So here he had lost his mother 
and he was waiting for his bride to be. So he was a, he was a man who was caught in betwixt. Mm -hmm. But God had answered all their prayers. Mm -hmm. And how many know God is, answers prayers if you just yes. put some trust in him? Mm -hmm. He said, if you have faith the size of what? Yes. And you can tell this mountain in your, mouth, in your, in your life to be moved. Yeah. So in conclusion, everything was done and was said was done by God. Mm -hmm. God's going to get his way one way or the other. And I think about the promise that he made to Abraham, how he was going to bless his seed. Mm -hmm. be as numerous as the stars. Oh, like, can you count them? Try counting them stars. That, that's something to think about. He blessed his seed beyond measure. Amen. We see God's faithfulness to his people and his promise. I'm just glad I'm part of God's promise. All right. Amen. <laughs> we all are part of his promise. Amen. That's the miracle. That he called, he called it. Many are chosen. Many are called, but few are. Chosen. And I'm glad I'm one of the chosen ones. That's right. Amen. Amen. And today he exercised faithfulness to all of us. Mm -hmm. there, there are millions in the household of faith that don't know what we got this morning. Amen. That's right. We got another, we got another see piece of treasure. Got, see what we got back from here today? That's yeah. good. We got a piece of treasure from the word of God. That's good, Brother That's, right. That's good. We see his guidance in individuals who want his will for their life. It's not your will for God's promise. It's his will. We can't hardly wait until next Sunday to get some more. Amen. <laughs> the word of God is rich. Unless you know money something is money can't buy. Money, money can't, can't buy this. No. Can't money buy can't buy this. Can't buy. Mm -hmm. This well, is a treasure. Most of, most of us ain't got no money no how. And they look at you like, why are you so happy? The joy I gave, the joy I have, and the world can't take it away. I don't care. I can have a Paul said I learned to be a base to have a lot. That's right. And have nothing. And still be content. I've learned to be satisfied. And the most satisfying thing is Jesus. Give me Jesus. The world can't take it away, but I can give it away. I'm not giving this treasure away. <laughs> in this earthen vessel. I'm not giving this away. It's yours. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. That's the Lord's prayer for us. That's our prayer. Let thy will be done on earth yeah. as it is in heaven. Human responsibility and God's providence are clear in this historical event. And God's providence is clear in your history. The enemies say all these things I give you, you just bow down and worship me. Mm -hmm. We must be diligent about our obedience to Him, knowing that He will be faithful to help us in every situation. All right. How many of us know obedience is better than sacrifice? Amen. 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 Somebody. We got here this morning. We were obedient to the Spirit, yeah. to the unctioning. God didn't grab you and say, "Get up." That's right. He just touched you, and you saw the bright morning. You said. I have breath in this body. Amen. I have one more day to continue to try to get this thing right. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to get myself dressed in these achy bones. Get on out, get out there and I'm going to get on out in this car. I don't have to walk 50 miles to church. I, I have a confession to make. Amen. This morning when Deacon Byrne called me, I was dead asleep. Mm -hmm. and, and I had one, one hour to get ready. And, but, but he, look, don't, he don't know that, but he said, well, I'll be there in about, about an hour. I said, I'll be ready. <laughs> and, and, look, and look who's here. Thank the Lord. Is here. Look who's here. And, and, and we all know Reverend Bowen has many reasons to say, I can't be there. That's and right. who will hold him accountable to that? That's right. Amen. I mean, this is a, a man well in his age with some disabilities, but yet, yeah. he still found it. He finds a way. A way to be in the house of the Lord. We still, we have obedience, yeah. uh, obedience servant right here who picks him up. But some folks like, I'll do it one time, but after that, you want to find you. But this is obedience. This is a work of God that we all can come together and learn and share the richness of God's word. Amen. 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 Take care of each other.